Uh, we're going to uh, let me start off. I introduce myself. I'm Kevin Creole from uh, Tirius Research, a uh, market advisory uh, company, and then former editor in chief of Microprocessor Report, and uh, been involved in a few startups and a few companies along the way. Nvidia, AMD. So um, I'm here. I'm really proud and happy to be here to support Applied Micro, um, and this is the beginning of the ARM 64-bit era. Uh, this is a great opportunity for us to get in on the ground floor of this product, and um, it's it's the first you know customizable 64-bit instructions or customizable parts using a 64-bit instruction set that are power efficient and uh, offers a lot of hope for the future for more power efficient processing. Uh, and, and Applied Micro is the first to market with this product, and this is a real silicon working. And we've got some uh, vendors that will talk about it uh, and their experience with working with Applied Micro on this product. And today we've brought together a number of, of thought leaders and pioneers that are going to bring this energy efficiency and uh, TCO benefits to the, uh, the HPC market. So um, I'd like to start off by introducing uh, from Sandia Labs, we're, oh, I should just give you uh, the order of the presentations. We're going to have Sandia Labs talk first. Uh, then a Paramesh from Applied Micro is going to uh, talk and introduce an, a video from HP, who could, uh, who's, uh, uh, has a, a video uh, uh, touting the benefits of uh, Applied Micro in their products. Um, and then we're going to hear from ARM. And finally, we're going to have a panel discussion with a number of the vendors who are working with Applied Micro on this product. So first off, we have uh, Dr. James Ang. If you want to come up, uh, he's a technical manager of uh, scalable computing. Whoops. And let's see. Get you up here in a second. Yeah. Oh, there we go. Yeah. And there you are. Uh, he's a technical manager of the Scalable Computing uh, Architecture Department at Sandia National Labs, and he supports the development of future supercomputer systems for leading edge scientific and data analytics. Um, you, you can see his whole full bio on the uh, ISC website. It would take yeah. the yeah, entire <laughs> entire presentation to, do, to go through it. All right. Okay. All right. Thank you, Kevin. Um, I guess I'd like to start off by thanking uh, Paramesh and his team. Um, I'd also like to acknowledge uh, Greg Asfalk, uh, one of the senior scientists at, uh, at Hewlett Packard. Um, Greg uh, helped us bring together this, this collaboration and uh, um, we've been working uh, with a pre-production version of uh, the X-Gene processor uh, on one of our uh, advanced architecture test beds. Um, uh, I think we're uh, probably the first, uh, at least the first DOE lab to have access to this technology and it's, uh, um, you know, pre-production uh, silicon. Uh, we do expect to uh, upgrade our system uh, before the end of the uh, before the end of September or the end of our fiscal year, uh, with uh, some of the production versions of the processor. Um, so I thought I'd, uh, the title of my talk I only have two slides is uh, ARM as an enabler for uh, high performance computing co-design, and uh, uh, within uh, within uh, Sandia and uh, and actually the Department of Energy uh, as a whole. Um, we're focused a lot on uh, the uh, opportunity and potential for co-design uh, to help us uh, bridge uh, um, a gap between what, what we would envision future applications to be. Is there a laser pointer here? No, I guess not. F future applications uh, shown in that block, uh, representing that block on the upper right, and future architectures uh, in the bottom, uh, bottom right. Um, and a lot of our emphasis for the last uh, several years has been the development of what we consider to be some strategic uh, co-design capabilities. And those include uh, things like uh, proxy applications, uh, uh, as exemplified by the Mantivo project. And uh, <clears throat> the idea behind this is to create uh, mini apps that uh, are uh, open source, freely available, downloadable, uh, that allow um, uh, both our computer scientists and application developers and, and those in industry uh, to uh, understand uh, with working code what, uh, uh, how our, 
our applications, our real applications might work. Uh, the problem with our real applications is there are uh, uh, um, hundreds of thousands of lines of code uh, or, um, or, or even larger. And, um, and so these mini apps uh, are, tend to be on the order of a, a few thousand to maybe 10,000 lines of code. Um, they are the vehicle for uh, a, a large number of architecture-centric optimizations and re-implementations to, to really express what uh, advanced architectures are capable of. Um, uh, we're very proud, uh, uh, in 2013, the Mantivo project uh, uh, won an R&D 100 award, and it included not just Sandia uh, proxy apps, mini apps, but also those from our sister labs, uh, uh, Los, Los Alamos, Lawrence Livermore, uh, and, and colleagues at, uh, at uh, AWE in the UK. Um, we're also working on the development of an architectural simulation framework called uh, uh, the Structural Simulation Toolkit, or SST. Um, this is uh, intended to give us a way to um, analyze uh, candidate uh, designs for advanced architecture concepts. Um, uh, SST itself is not a simulator, it's a framework. So we are integrating to a large number of open source uh, or perhaps uh, proprietary uh, simulation modules. Um, examples of that are, include things like uh, GEM5 uh, that originated out of uh, Wisconsin, University of Wisconsin and Michigan, um, uh, DRAM Sim from the University of Maryland. Uh, we've been developing our own modules for uh, NIC analysis and simulation and, uh, and router designs. Um, again, all of this uh, is also open source and uh, available on that website. Uh, and then finally, uh, what we've been uh, working with are uh, a number of different advanced architecture test beds. And of course, the, uh, um, the Gemini system with uh, McDivitt cartridges from HP uh, using the APM X-Gene processors is a good example of kind of the state of the art for 64-bit uh, ARM uh, technology in this space. And um, Cy Hammond, one of, one of my staff members in, in the audience, has been um, porting and re-implementing re a number of our um, Mantivo proxy apps to, to use on this test bed. And uh, <clears throat> while I don't have examples of his results, uh, that's something we can we can discuss uh, offline. I um, also wanted to point out uh, that uh, Sandia, in partnership with uh, uh, Lawrence Berkeley National Lab, uh, a couple months ago published a uh, a report on uh, abstract machine models and proxy architectures. And this whole graphic on the on the right hand side of, of the slide is ended, intended to show. Um, the role that uh, proxy architectures play. And the idea here is, uh, is to have some ab abstractions that, that describe uh, the advanced architectures that we're likely to see in the exascale time frame. And um, while the future architectures are mostly proprietary, uh, these proxy architectures and abstract machine models are intended to be something that we can talk about uh, and, and uh, freely share, uh, you, we use those to uh, communicate to our application teams and our system software development teams um, uh, uh, the kinds of technologies that are coming from the architectural perspective. Um, also shown in the graphic is some of the co-design trade-offs or design trade-offs that occur between our proxy applications, our test pads, our architectural simulators, and so forth. Um, the last slide is really just to indicate that uh, um, there are multiple paths possible for co-design. Um, uh, and one of the things that we've been uh, dealing with is that to date, uh, our co-design efforts are, are really reactive. And that is that uh, we are, uh, we meaning our, our, for our application teams and perhaps for our system software teams, we're uh, we're not yet having uh, influence over the future architectures. Um, and, and that's really where we want to get to with, with co-design. So in a reactive mode, um, the, 
the opportunities we have to change are, are really focused on our application software and perhaps on our system software. Um, um, what we want to move to is uh, a more proactive co-design path where um, uh, uh, we actually have an opportunity to influence what future hardware might look like. And, and through that, uh, make our applications much more um, performant and, and energy efficient. Um, I think uh, it's, uh, hopefully everyone in the room would agree, well, we can discuss this with the panel, uh, I think the ARM ecosystem really helps um, um, innovate and foster this kind of uh, hardware influence and uh, uh, you know, support the kind of innovation that we're looking for uh, and, and the advanced architecture concepts we're, we're analyzing with our architectural simulation tools. Um, <clears throat> and with that, I think I will turn the floor back over to Kevin. Thanks very much, Dr. Ang.